Today we continue on with Chapter 5, The Decision for God. Do you really believe you can make a voice that can drown out God's? Do you really believe you can devise a thought system that can separate you from Him? Do you really believe you can plan for your safety and joy better than He can? You need be neither careful nor careless. You need merely cast your cares upon Him because He careth for you. You are His care because He loves you. His voice reminds you always that all hope is yours because of His care. You cannot choose to escape His care because that is not His will, but you can choose to accept His care and use the infinite power of His care for all those He created by it. There have been many healers who did not heal themselves. They have not moved mountains by their faith because their faith was not whole. Some of them have healed the sick at times, but they have not raised the dead. Unless the healer heals himself, he cannot believe that there is no order of difficulty in miracles. He has not learned that every mind God created is equally worthy of being healed because God created it whole. You are merely asked to return to God, the mind as He created it. He asks you only for what He gave, knowing that this giving will heal you. Sanity is wholeness, and the sanity of your brothers is yours. Why should you listen to the endless insane calls you think are made upon you, when you can know the voice for God is in you? God commended His Spirit to you, and asked that you commend yours to Him. He wills to keep it in perfect peace, because you are of one mind and spirit with Him. Excluding yourself from the atonement is the ego's last ditch defense of its own existence. It reflects both the ego's need to separate and your willingness to side with its separateness. This willingness means that you do not want to be healed. But the time is now. You have not been asked to work out the plan of salvation yourself, because, as I told you before, the remedy could not be of your making. God Himself gave you the perfect correction for everything you made that is not in accord with His holy will. I am making His plan perfectly explicit to you, and will also tell you of your part in it, and how urgent it is to fulfill it. God weeps at the, quote, sacrifice of His children, who believe they are lost to Him. Whenever you are not wholly joyous, it is because you have reacted with a lack of love to one of God's creations. Perceiving this as, quote, sin, you become defensive because you expect attack. The decision to react in this way is yours, and can therefore be undone. It cannot be undone by repentance in the usual sense, because this implies guilt. If you allow yourself to feel guilty, you will reinforce the error, rather than allow it to be undone for you. Decision cannot be difficult. This is obvious if you realize that you must already have decided not to be wholly joyous, if that is how you feel. Therefore, the first step in the undoing is to recognize that you actively decided wrongly, but can as actively decide otherwise. Be very firm with yourself in this, and keep yourself fully aware that the undoing process, which does not come from you, is nevertheless within you, because God placed it there. Your part is merely to return your thinking to the point at which the error was made, and give it over to the atonement in peace. Say this to yourself as sincerely as you can, remembering that the Holy Spirit will respond fully 
to your slightest invitation. I must have decided wrongly, because I am not at peace. I made the decision myself, but I can also decide otherwise. I want to decide otherwise, because I want to be at peace. I do not feel guilty, because the Holy Spirit will undo all the consequences of my wrong decision, if I will let him. I choose to let him, by allowing him to decide for God, for me. And from the workbook, Lesson 36, My Holiness Envelops Everything I See. Today's idea extends the idea for yesterday, from the perceiver to the perceived. You are holy because your mind is part of God's. And because you are holy, your sight must be holy as well. Sinless means without sin. You cannot be without sin a little. You are sinless or not. If your mind is part of God's, you must be sinless, or a part of His mind would be sinful. Your sight is related to His holiness not to your ego, and therefore not to your body. Four three to five minute practice periods are required for today. Try to distribute them fairly evenly, and make the shorter applications frequently, to protect your protection throughout the day. The longer practice periods should take this form. First, close your eyes and repeat the idea for today several times, slowly. Then open your eyes and look quite slowly about you, applying the idea specifically to whatever you note in your casual survey. Say, for example, My holiness envelops that rug. My holiness envelops that wall. My holiness envelops these fingers. My holiness envelops that chair. My holiness envelops that body. My holiness envelops this pen. Several times during these practice periods, close your eyes and repeat the idea to yourself. Then open your eyes and continue as before. For the shorter exercise periods, close your eyes and repeat the idea Look about you as you repeat it again, and conclude with one more repetition with your eyes closed. All applications should, of course, be made quite slowly, as effortlessly and unhurriedly as possible. My holiness envelops everything I see. So we go from accepting that my mind is part of God and I am very holy, to extending the holiness of our very being to everything and everyone that is perceived. It's like the blanket of peace spreads and covers the entire world, the entire cosmos. And you could do this with looking at the body, looking around the room, looking around the landscape, looking toward the sky, the stars, the sun, the moon, watching the news, glancing through Facebook or the internet, my holiness 
envelops everything I see. Because my mind is holy, my holiness envelops everything I see. Again, this is bringing the perceived world and the perceiver together in holiness. In holiness, the observed and the observer are one. In holiness, the subject and the object are one. This is again our invitation to the Holy Spirit to reveal Christ's vision, to reveal the light, the unity, the love, the oneness of God. to experience pure spirit, all-encompassing, omniscient, all-powerful. In this beautiful workbook lesson, fits right in with our reading from the text today, that it is possible to decide for God. To trust in God's plan of safety and joy and happiness. We are reassured by Jesus and the Holy Spirit you need be neither careful nor careless you need merely cast your cares upon him because he careth for you you are his care because he loves you his voice reminds you always that hope is yours because of his care. So with this holiness that transforms perception entirely, We can heal the sick and raise the dead. In holiness, we see that there is no order of difficulty in miracles. We are accepting our mind as God created it. accepting our mind's wholeness and completeness and totality. So today, silently, accept this holiness and love And see that it includes everyone and everything that it is perceived. See that the mind, asleep and dreaming, cannot be excluded from the atonement, which awakens the mind. You cannot be excluded from the correction. The time is now. 
instead of trying to work out the plan of salvation for yourself, see that holiness is the answer. That God himself gave you the perfect correction for everything you made that is not in accord with his holy will. The answer is holiness. Holiness encompasses everything perceived. Holiness extends. Holiness radiates. And so, in peace, we remind ourselves throughout the day, my holiness envelops everything I see. <laughs>